Gospel hymn and songs number 21. Will your anchor hold? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold, their wings of strife. When the strong tides lift and the cable strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? It is safely mold, it will the storm will stand, for it is well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables passed from his heart to mine, can defy the blast through strength divine. It will firmly hold in the straits of fear. When the breakers have told the reef is near, though the tempest rave and the wild winds blow. Not an angry wave shall our back overflow. It will surely hold in the floods of death. When the waters cold shields our latest breath, on the rising tide it can never fail. While our hopes abide within the veil. When our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all pass forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fasting to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love.
that keeps our soul. So open your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord this morning. Whatever storm, whatever problem, whatever challenge you are passing through this morning, everything Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles The Acts of the Apostles Acts 14 Acts 14 And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were ware of it, and fled into Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. 
Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Atalia and thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Acts 15 and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, Hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. 
then pleased at the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
But this can be rich if they have contentment and sharing for salvation plan. But if you know any who don't, they have plenty. I must then pity the man. And he knows not the giver of life. Traveler or merchant or builder who builds all the sand. Pauper or king to be saved is a thing. If it's lost, then it's a man. I guess there are those who pity the saved as though they were missing life's best. Forgetting the treasures of earth pass away and that heaven's the place to invest. Oh, meanwhile, I see me, the man who is scheming to hold up the wealth that he can but if while he's living to god is not giving his soul and pity the man The giver of life, traveler, romantic, a builder who build all the sand. Papa Rocking to be saved is the thing lost and pity the man. Giver of life, to offer our tithe and offering now. Tithe is one-tenth of our gross income as salary announced and ten one-tenth of our profit as businessmen and women. In Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, 
and prove me now herewith, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be no room to receive it. We want to raise up whatever we have brought to the Lord as we pray over them now. Father, we want to appreciate you for ever providing for each and every one of us. Out of the much you have given, this token has been brought to you tonight. We pray you will accept them from our hands. And in return, Lord God Almighty, you will bless all your people. We thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please, we can drop our offerings in the bags that have been passed around. been working great miracles in the life of people present physically in the program and uh, those who are connecting through satellite through internet through zoom and social media the lord has been glorifying his name and we want to listen to uh, some of these testimonies like i told you at the end of this program don't be in a hurry to go stay back and we shall rejoice together the first testifier praise the lord Praise the Lord! By the special grace of God, my name is Sister Rachel Ahmed from Abuja region, Itako Group, Palace District. I want to thank the name of the Lord for what God has done for me yesterday. Since 2013, I have a very painful, I have a pain in my stomach. And uh, that pain is as a result of I felt sick. I went to the hospital, they checked, they said there's nothing there, but there's, the pain is still there. After the scan, they did everything, no solution, but the brethren prayed. Praise the Lord. So I was delivered, I was healed, but the pain is still there. I see there's a sore, an injury at the right side of my stomach. When the pain starts, I can't lift up my right leg. In fact, it will be paining me as if I, the leg wants to paralyze. So I've been managing it, praying to God that God, one day you do it. And uh, yesterday, at work, the pain comes up. When the pain comes up, I can't stand to, car to carry anything from the ground. I can't bend to pick something easily. But I told God, I said, God, this time, this pain come at the wrong time. And uh, as I step, we step my foot to this place, I will not go back with the pain. I came here yesterday, I was praying to God with the pain, praying, telling God that God, remember me. And I was our father, and the Lord climbed the pulpit, he said, he's talking to you in particular. I claim it. I said, God remember me. And I see he was preaching, he prayed. After it, the last amen, praise the Lord. He so she lay her hands to the place where the problem. I laid my hand there. In fact, after the last amen, that's how the pain vanished. Praise the, the vanished. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, uh, it's gone and it's gone forever. I in went Jesus on to name. confirm it. Amen. 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 We thank God for what the Lord has done for our sister. The pain is gone and it's never coming back in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister, tell us your name briefly and uh, be very brief. Praise the Lord. Praise the Master Jesus. My name is Ngozi Mwezi. I, I am from Abuja region in Jai Group, Deepa Life High School, Kadokam Grand. I want to testify what God has done in my life. Since 2007, I worked for King's Care Hospital. They did their straight my leg, very painful, swallowed up. 
And they did the test, they say it's arthritis. I said, what caused the arthritis for me now? They say that is uh, maybe old age. I said, okay. So I'll be praying, say, God, help me, remember me, you are the one who created me. As I pray like that, I go to, it's unbearable. I, if I have enemy, I will not allow enemy to suffer what I suffer for this pain. It's very painful. It's itching me inside, walking up on my body. That if it's not unbearable for me, I cry for another sister, I cry for another but They direct me, I go to Matama. All these things, we, 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 I try my own. As Please tell woman, us what the Lord has done, sister. But uh, through the ministration of the man of God had, as he praying, say, uh, everything concerning all that, uh, for our body, I uh, leg everything as uh, we pray like that. And uh, God Almighty uses his power to uh, touch me and every pain in my body, every problem come and vanish. Every Praise pain, the Lord. every problem has vanished. Praise the Lord. And it's gone never to come back in Jesus' name. Amen. We move to the media section. Two minutes. Please give us some of the testimonies. We have some testimonies from the social media. From Yaya region, Sister Ladi Ogoi used to have pains on her right hand, right leg. And that happened for a long time. She said, after the GS prayer, last night, the pains suddenly disappeared. And now, she can stretch her hand and her leg, and there is no pain at all. Praise the Lord. Testimony from Tasha Group, Guagua Region. Brother Samuel Danladi was healed of kidney infection. According to the writing, the problem started since November 2016. And he has visited several hospitals to find solution to the problem. But all efforts proved abortive. After the prayer of the man of God on the first day of the crusade, he touched himself. He searched himself. He went back to check and found out that the kidney infection had totally disappeared. According to his writing, he is perfectly healed and all the symptoms have gone away. Also from the social media, Amakachika Ede came back home with heavy pain all over her body. But when he heard that our father in the faith was coming, she decided to trust God right on the social media. During the prayers, she believed God and she said after the prayers, she checked and the pain is gone. She says she's perfectly okay now. And God has healed her. Njoku David says, Almighty God healed me. I had a back pain that lasted for almost one year after the prayer of the man of God. I am now totally healed. Praise the Lord. Striking testimony from Taraba State. Mama Usman Audu from Bailey region in Taraba State was a blind woman. She was invited to the crusade on Friday night, that's yesterday, after the prayers of the man of God, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. She believed God and she trusted God and started to wait for her eyes to be opened. Suddenly, according to her writing, her eyes instantaneously got opened. Brethren, Sister Mama Usman Audu can now see clearly praise the lord finally from ebuka fabian he says i had waist pain excruciating waist pain after the prayer of the man of god the waist pain totally disappeared praise the lord hallelujah put your hands together for jesus give jesus a clap of and everybody said, yeah. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to our Bible study. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the godliness that comes into our lives as we study your word. We pray, Lord, today, as your word comes, 
transform every life by the word in Jesus name help us Lord as we know the truth that the truth will make us triumphant in life make us new creatures new believers transformed believers let the purpose of the study of your word be reflected in every life in Jesus name but thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray we're going on and continuing with our study of the epistle of James general epistle to all the believers everywhere to you to me and to everyone today we come to chapter 1 verse 17 in verse 17 every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning verse 18 in verse 18 of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures 19 wherefore my beloved brethren let every man everyone every believer be sweet to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath then in verse 20 in verse 20 for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of god the wrath of man the indignation of man the anger of man the fury of man however small however packaged however manifested the wrath the anger the indignation of man of a woman of course of any human being the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God in verse 21 it says wherefore lay apart you wake up in the morning you have your devotion you're going into life you're going into the office you're going into the marketplace there's something you check up any kind of filthiness all of them lay aside and the superfluity of naughtiness what comes naturally you don't have to be prayerful to be naughty you don't have to be spiritual to be naughty you don't have to, you don't need self-denial to be naughty just the natural depraved man as man is born into the world is born with depravity and naughtiness and as we grow in life that naughtiness overflows and it says if we're going to be beloved brethren children of god here is what to lay aside we lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness so that we can receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls then in verse 22 it says but be ye doers of the word not just hearers be ye doers of the word not just preachers like i preach i'm not just to preach the word i am to obey the word and do the word be ye doers of the word and not hearers only not proclaimers only not preachers only deceiving your own selves tonight we're looking at the ministry of god's word in heaven watch believers there are many believers in court uh, worldly believers in court 
There are sinful, backsliding believers in course. There are stagnant believers in course. There are the backward looking believers in course. There are worldly, earthly, sensual believers in course. But for the people who are heaven watch, who study the word with a purpose, who follow after the Lord for a purpose, who seek the Lord for a purpose. Their purpose is to get to heaven. And they're referred to as heavenward believers. And now, the ministry of the word, of God's word, is such heavenward believers. There are three things we're looking at as we consider the passage. Number one, the perfect gifts from the Father by the Word. He gives us gift, every perfect gift coming from the Father with whom there is no shadow of variableness nor any kind of turning. Number one, the perfect gifts from the Father by the Word. Number two, the profitable graciousness as the first fruits through the word when we hear the word it turns our lives around it makes us converted and committed to the lord and it brings forth the fruit and we become we ourselves will become the first fruits for from the word by the word and through the word number three our practical godliness the theoretical godliness the one that professes i am and they are not the one that knows the theory of following after the lord but his own theory they can recite the word they can coach the word they can throw the word at you but it doesn't have a revealing reflecting power in their lives but the godliness that is practical you can see it you can examine it and you can see that this godliness is not just the profession of the mouth it's not theory it's not history i knew the lord 20 whatever 19 whatever but when you look for the result of knowing the Lord, the practical evidence and the spiritual, scriptural essence of knowing the Lord, you cannot find out, but that the practical one, number three, our practical godliness in faithfulness to the word. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at perfect gifts from the father by the word in james chapter 1 verse 17 every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down it came down at the time of the apostles it's still coming down today it will keep coming down until we see the lord face to face cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning verse 18 in verse 18 of his own will begat ye us by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures three things we're looking at number one is the precious gift of salvation for sonship number two the purifying gift of sanctification and steadfastness number three the powerful gifts and the plural of the spirit for service look at number one number one the precious gift of salvation for sonship salvation is a gift it's not something you earn 
It's not something you work for. It's not something you marriage. It's not something you strive to attain. It's a gift that you obtain. It tells us in John chapter 1, reading from verse 12, John 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, they don't receive a denomination. They don't receive an ideology. They don't receive just the doctrine. They receive him, the Savior, to them. He gave power, privilege to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13, in verse 13, which were born, born again which were born, born anew, which were born not of blood, no, of the will of the flesh, no, of the will of man, but of God. In Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 8, Ephesians 2 verse 8, for by grace, not by works, by grace are you saved through faith, and that salvation not of yourself, not something you earn, not something you work religiously to have, not something that your natural talents, your natural gift, and your natural activity and ability gives you. It says that salvation is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, salvation. The gift of God, forgiveness, freedom, redemption, adoption into the family of God. Everything that's still salvation, everything comes at the gift of God. And then in verse 9, it says, not of words, lest any man should boast. And then in verse 10, it says, for we who are saved, we who are born again, we who have received that gift of salvation, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works as a result of the salvation. As long as the salvation abides, then we manifest good works. It says good works which God as before ordained that we should walk in them. Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all, available for all, provided for all. And everyone is invited to have that grace gift of salvation. Verse 12, it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly. Frivolity gets out when grace comes in. Foolishness, foolish talk, foolish attitude, foolish behavior gets out when the grace of God comes in and that grace of God teaches us to live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. Verse 13, it says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. The small ones, he redeems us from all iniquity. The common ones, everybody does it. Everybody in a street, everybody in a community, that's what everybody does. But he redeems us from common 
iniquity, habitual iniquity. That's what you have been doing uh, since you came to this world. And that's what you picked up from other people. You learn from other people. You collect from other people. All those collected iniquities, everything uh, vanishes away. It says to redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works look at number two here number two is the purifying gift it says every good gift perfect gift comes from the father and here is another gift the purifying gift of sanctification and steadfastness john chapter 17 Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. The reason the word is given to us, it to so dig deep into our nature and remove the depravity, the naturalness of going astray, sanctify them, purify them, purge them, circumcise them through thy truth thy word is truth look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says neither pray i for these alone sanctification is not just for the early disciples early apostles he said i'm not just praying for these in my presence but for them also who shall believe on me through their word matthew was there through your reading of matthew and john was there through the reading of john and all those apostles were there through what they will write and give unto us giving us the new testament the new covenant it says and pray for all of them also which shall believe on me through their word verse 21 that they all may be one. Sanctification doesn't scatter believers, it gathers believers. Sanctification does not divide believers, it unites believers. Sanctification does not bring conflict and diversion and destruction among believers it brings life brings unity brings fellowship and brings love it says i'm praying for this gift of sanctification to be given unto them that they all may be one anywhere you see this unity there's no sanctification there either a is sanctified b is not sanctified and A and B are trying to struggle, and B is struggling for position and power and recognition, but A is struggling to keep his sanctification. Anywhere there is division, anywhere there's disunity, anywhere there is conflict, anywhere there is fighting against one another, that they are in a man struggling for recognition therefore they collide there's no sanctification there and if christ comes and meets all those so-called believers in their kind of conflict and disunity fighting not for the faith but they are fighting for whatever it is they are struggling for if christ comes and meets them in that condition they will not get to heaven if the bible is true and the bible is true that without holiness no man no one shall see the lord it says sanctify them and i pray for these but not for them alone i pray for everyone that will believe on me through their words that they all may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that they also 
may the one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me when believers are in conflict the world will not believe oh they say they're just like us we fight they fight we compete with ourselves they compete with themselves we annoy ourselves we disregard ourselves they disregard themselves too we fight against our leaders in the nation they fight against their leader too in the church we're all the same why are they calling me to believe what has the faith and the believing what has it done in them but when we believe and we're saved when we believe and we're sanctified and we are one and everybody can see that practical oneness it says that the world may believe that thou hast sent me verse 22 in verse 22 and the glory which thou gavest me i have given them that they may be one even as we are one verse 23 in verse 23 i in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 12. In Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 12, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people, the people already saved and born again, with his own blood, he suffered without the gate. What do we do? Verse 13, it says, Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the calm, bearing his reproach. There will be reproach. There might be insult, there might be assault, there might be defamation, there might be belittling of your personality. But uh, you don't abandon the cross, you don't abandon Christ because of that. It says we go to him, for him to sanctify us, even with all the reproach and with all the insult and with all the assault, let us go forth. Therefore, unto him, without the calm, bearing his reproach. Verse 14, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain. Get rid of that. Avoid. Don't get near that. It appears to be evil. Maybe it's not completely, completely evil. But the people who see you will interpret it to be evil. The people who hear of your action will judge that action to be evil. The people on the receiving side who get the result of your action, they'll say, that's evil. Maybe you didn't judge it to be evil. The people on the receiving end of your action, they judge it to be evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Look at 23 there. In verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, totally, completely, entirely. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, faithful is he 
that call it you who also will do it in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it verse 26 he gave himself for the church that he Christ might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word verse 27 that he might present that church to himself a glorious church sanctification makes the church a glorious church the people who do not desire sanctification pray for sanctification deny themselves so we can all be sanctified the people who do not pursue the possession of sanctification they don't want the church to be glorious they want the church to be grounded they want the church to be at the back they want the church this church to be like every other church they want the church to retain some of its depraved but the people who want the church to be glorious who want the church to be without spot without wrinkle those are the people that consecrate those are the people that pray unto the lord that they may be sanctified as other members too are sanctified that he might present it to himself a glorious church not have a spot or equal or any sort of thing but that it should be holy that the church should be holy that every member young and old should be holy that every member men and women should be holy that all the church the members the ministers the workers the preachers the pastors that everyone should be holy that the church that every family in the church should be holy that's what jesus died for that's what jesus has provided and when we pray he will do it but that it should be holy and without blemish. Look at number three here. Number three is the powerful gift or the powerful gift of the Spirit for service. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4. Acts 1 verse 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them, he didn't advise them, commanded them. He didn't, you know, ask them, what do you think about this? Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 8, in verse 8, but he shall receive power. That the gift of God, he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Well, then, unto the uttermost part of the earth beyond Jerusalem, beyond the first century, until the end of the world that we need to be evangelizing and preaching the gospel. We need the power, we need the gift. The powerful gift of the Spirit for service. Look at chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 33. Acts 2, 
verse 33 therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost he has shed forth this which he now see and hear verse 38 verse 38 then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost verse 39 for the promise is unto you unto the people there present and unto your children unto their children biological unto their spiritual children too their converts and it says and unto them that are far off far away from jerusalem far away from the first century unto them that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call in first corinthians chapter 12 look at verse 1 First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 Now concerning spiritual gifts Gifts of the spirit Brethren I would not have you ignorant Look at verse uh, Look at uh, verse 7 there In verse 7 But the manifestation of the spirit Is given to every man to profit with her Verse 8 For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, and to another, the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit, verse 9, in verse 9, and to another faith, the gift of faith, by the same Spirit, and to another, the gifts of healing. By the same Spirit, verse 10, in verse 10, to another the working of miracles and to another prophecy and to another discerning of spirits and to another diverse kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues in verse 11 it says and all these all these gifts all these gifts of the spirit worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will as he will luke chapter 11 verse 13 in luke 11 13 if ye then being evil natural people if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him the gift of salvation is from the father the gift of sanctification from the Father and the gifts of the Spirit from the Father ask and shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. He'll give you the appropriate gifts in Jesus' name. Salvation, available for everyone. Sanctification, available for everyone. Amen. The baptism in the Holy Ghost, available for everyone in Jesus' name. Look at point number two here. Point number two. We're looking at a profitable... Uh, uh, graciousness as first fruits through the word. The word gives us a lot. It tells us in James chapter 1, 
verse 19. James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man, everyone, every brother, every sister, every member of the church, every worker in the church, every pastor in the church, every leader, everyone. The word of God speaks to everyone. It's not speaking to them and leaving us out. When we're saved, we take our place with all the children of God. And when the word of God comes, we don't separate ourselves, isolate ourselves, we don't promote ourselves to a self-made throne where the word cannot reach us, speaks to everyone. Let every man be sweet to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Verse 20. In verse 20, for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Verse 21. In verse 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness, filthiness of every size, of every shape, filthiness as you see in the society, filthiness as you see in the secret, filthiness whether man can see or man cannot see. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness superfluity of naughtiness there shouldn't even be any naughtiness at all not to talk of superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness where there is pride we cannot receive the word of god where there is invested interest in filthiness we'll not be able to receive the word of god where there is naughtiness headiness stubbornness stony heart we will be fighting against the word of god again and debating in our heart we will not be able to receive the word of god with meekness but we lay all that aside so that we can receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls look at three things here number one renewing the ennobling wonders of sweet hearing and slow speaking number two renouncing the ensnaring works with sinners superfluity number three retaining the engrafted word for sustained salvation look at number one number one renewing the ennobling wonders of swift hearing and slow speaking we're looking at James chapter 1 verse 19. In James chapter 1 verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every beloved brother, every beloved sister, every candidate for heaven, let every man be sweet to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. What brings division in the church? Being sweet to speak, sweet to hear, and to sweet to wrath, and slow to hear. What brings division in the family? What brings separation in the family? What brings tearing apart in the family? What brings divorce in the family? Because each of them, man, woman, woman, one, they are sweet 
and too fast to get angry when they interpret each other's action and they're too fast to speak and the words they speak they're like daggers in the hearts of people and they're slow to listen slow to hear one another or brings division conflict protests in a nation when the you know this side they're, they're slow to hear we talk we shout we cry we're hungry and they're slow to hear and they just carry on governors as they show and then the other side too they switch to wrath and to get angry and to say we'll pull everything down I see pulling everything down will bring the food we're asking for. If we're going to have peace in the church, in the family, in the community, my beloved brethren, husbands and wives, members of the church and members of society, let every man be sweet to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. It tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, reading from verse 2. Ecclesiastes 5, 2. Be not rash with thy mouth. Let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. As we come to the sanctuary, as we come to the house of God, let your hands rest. Let your feet rest. Let your eyes look on. Let your ears be open to the word of God. Be not too hasty to do this, do that. Be not too hasty to act out this and act out that. Let's see the peace of God in you. The quietness, the serenity, and the respect and the honor we have for God in his house be not rash with thy mouth and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God for God is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words the few. We're looking at number two here. Number two is the renouncing of ensnaring works for sinners superfluity. Normally, sinners have their filthiness and they have their naughtiness. If sinners did not have naughtiness, there would be no need for salvation. They need salvation because of their naughtiness. But when the sinner's naughtiness flows into so-called believers, and as teachers find it difficult to teach in their classrooms, the preachers have the same difficulty teaching the word of God in the church. That's bad. That's evil. But... He wants us to renounce all those ensnaring works of the sinner's superfluity. We're looking at James chapter 1, reading from verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God in sinners when he crusade. And, you know, somebody there is angry. Another person there is angry. 
and the workers are angry and the pastor, the evangelist, the preacher looking at this and that also gets angry and we begin to speak words of anger, indignation, wrath. And the sinners are there and they came for salvation. They won't get saved. The pastor is fighting, the evangelist is fighting, the workers are fighting, and the people who handle whatever, they are all fighting, they are brass. Uh, there, there's no salvation for the sinners that come there. Let the people go back home and let them go and repent and have real salvation that wrath and anger will be totally taken up. When the preachers are angry and the singers are angry and everybody is full of wrath and we're dishing out our wrath on the people. Nobody gets saved. It's a waste of our time. Why are we wasting our time? Let's go back to the cross. Go back to Calvary because the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. In verse 21, that's why it now says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. It tells us in First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, for us to be in good relationship with God, we lay aside all malice. For us to be fit for the service of God, and the least of service in the house of God, and for God to recognize that, that we are serving Him, we have to lay aside all malice. For us to be of any benefit to, to the local church, for us to be of any benefit to the church at large, the church worldwide, for us to be of any benefit to the people we are sending the message to, we need to lay aside all malice. What's malice? Because something had happened between you and him, between you and her, there is sadness. That sadness goes to grief. That grief goes to anger. That anger becomes settled. That because of what he did to me, because of what he did to my wife, to what he did to my husband, what he did to my fellow brother, my fellow sister, because of what he did to that other worker. He didn't do it to me, but I see he did it to them. We have settled anger. That's malice. And it says when we come before the Lord, and if you are before the Lord all the time, in your morning devotion, in your family devotion, anywhere you are, if you are before the Lord every time, you lay aside permanently all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies, and all evil speaking. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain, abstain, abstain. If you are born again, abstain. If you are a true brother, a true sister, abstain. If you are a candidate for heaven, abstain. Abstain from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. He wants us to get rid of all those things. Look at number three here now. Number three, we're looking at retaining the engrafted word for sustained salvation. 
retaining the engrafted word for sustained salvation. It tells us in James chapter 1, verse 21, the latter part, and receive with meekness. We cannot receive the word with pride, with a kind of elevated opinion of ourselves. When we're thinking of ourselves all the time, and thinking of our self-esteem all the time, and thinking of our high position all the time, when we come to the house of God, the presence of God levels everyone, and we bow and bend before the Lord. And all we can have is loneliness of mind and meekness, and we receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And that is what brings fruit in us and through us. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us ye received it not at the word of men hold on there there are people nowadays sorry to say and sorry to know this that when they refer to the Apostle Paul, some of them, they just say, Brother Paul. That's bad enough. Sometimes they go beyond that. They say, Paul. Paul said, then they say, but you must not take all the words of Paul seriously. You must understand, Paul was a man like I was. No, sir. The Lord said he will reveal unsearchable mystery unto him. He has not promised any of us here. He will reveal unsearchable mystery to us. Paul the Apostle said, By the grace of God, I am what I am. And the grace that was bestowed on me made him to do more than all the other apostles put together. And when he rebuked Peter with the word, Peter did not come around to say, who are you, Paul? Peter recognized him. That man had authority. This is a man that had gone to the third heavens and to come back. And then some people are now telling us that, you know, that's Paul. What he said, they cannot receive because it's the word of a man. And they say he made mistakes. I pray that God will open their eyes. They're contradicting the Bible, the word of God. Here we come, the Thessalonians, when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, of us, Paul and the others, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. If you listen to those preachers, it will bring doubt in your mind. You read something here, and if that thing is difficult to practice naturally, and you need prayer, you need self-denial, you need the grace of God, before you can practice that thing, you just give up. It's the word of Paul. Everything is the word of God. I said everything is the word of God. What you read in Genesis, you said the word of Moses. Is he the word of Moses? What you read in Joshua? Is he the word of Joshua? 
what you read in Matthew, you see the word of Matthew and what you read in the epistle to the Romans. You see the words of Paul. Have you gone back home? Are you offended? I said what you read in John. Is it the words of John? No. Everything we read in the Bible, in the word of God, is the word of God. And Jesus said, any man that will take away from the word of this prophecy, his part will be taken out of the book of life. Anyone that will add to this word, God will add unto him the plagues that are reaching therein. Be very careful you are not swept off your feet by these people who are now picking and choosing the ones they accept that the word of God, the one they don't accept that knocks them and calls them to repentance. They say the word of man. It says, for this cause also, thank we God without ceasing because when ye received the word of god which ye heard of us ye received it not at the word of men but as it is in truth the word of god which effectually worketh also in you that believe we'll come to point number three now Point number three is our practical godliness in faithfulness to the world. Faithfulness to the world. If we're going to be faithful to God, we have not seen God face to face, but we have His word. Faithfulness to God demands faithfulness to His word. Faithfulness to God demands faithfulness to his servants that he sent and his servants who are telling us the totality and completeness of the word of God without subtraction, without addition. Faithfulness of God demands that everything we hear, everything we learn from the word of God that tells us to pray and be saved, pray and be restored, pray and be sanctified, pray and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Faithfulness to God demands we're faithful to that call, we're faithful to that demand, we're faithful to that consecration, devotion unto the Lord. Our practical godliness in faithfulness to the word. It says in James chapter 1, Verse 22, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word, and not preachers only, deceiving your own selves. Are there preachers who preach? give tithes and offering and they never give any tithe and offering preachers not doers and there are preachers who tell us that you know you and your wife you and your husband should stay together until death do you part but those preachers for whatever reason or the other they send their wives to her mother go and stay there Give me time to breathe. I want to, you know, have my life. But you preacher, you tell congregation, stay together. But you cannot stay together. They are preachers of the word. They are not doers of the word. Are there preachers that will discipline a member of the church? If the member of the church puts his hand in the offering bag and takes money, so go and spend on his soul. And the same preacher will not take the money to the place, to the bank where it belongs, and then uh, before anything is counted, the preacher takes the money. I need money for this and money for that. You know what the word of God says? 
be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, and not preachers only. And the members of the church that come every time, we hear the word, we learn the word, we read the word. But as much as what we read and what we hear, how much are we doing? He wants us not to deceive ourselves, not to delude ourselves, and not to a kind of fool ourselves, thinking we're going to heaven when all we have is hearing the word, hearing the word, and not doing the word. You know, somebody comes to our church here for one whole year and is not born again. Does a see not be hearing? We should be born again almost every time. Be ye doers of the word. Get born again, not hearers only. And there are people here that hear about holiness, holiness, sanctification is the will of God. And yet, we find unsanctified attitude, unsanctified life in the life of that person. Hearing and hearing, be ye doers of the world, not hearers only. Are there people that say, here, husbands love your wives as Christ also loved the church? And the home is like a military cantonment. So many laws, so many rules, and so many pressure, and so much wickedness in the home, oppressing each other. They are hearers of the word, they are not doers. And they are deceiving themselves because they think they are going to heaven. It's the doers of the word that get to heaven. And it says, but be ye doers of the word word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves there are three things we're looking at here number one the doers of the word in all sincerity they're sincere they are honest with themselves and with their neighbors, the doers of the word in all sincerity. Number two, the deceivers in their waywardness without salvation. Number three, the disciples committed to the word of the scripture. Look at number one. Number one, the doers of the word in all sincerity. It tells us in Romans chapter 6, reading here from verse 17. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin. Past tense, ye were no more. Ye were the servants of sin. But, but now, ye have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered you. Now, when the grace of God came in and when you heard the word of God, you are now doers of the word. And you do that from the heart. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness may it be fulfilled in all our lives in Jesus name I come into number two here number two the deceivers in their waywardness without salvation it tells us in uh, Matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 21 Matthew chapter 7 Verse 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Understand, there are two places in eternity, not three, two. One is heaven, the other is hell. Those who are not in heaven will be in hell forever and ever and it says not everyone 
that says unto me, Lord, Lord. What are the people that say, Lord, Lord? Preachers, members of churches, religious people, those who pray, those who fast, those who have, in quote, ministry, those who oversee assemblies, Lord, Lord, those who have public ministry, Lord, Lord, those who evangelize, Lord, Lord, those who carry the label of the name of a denomination, Lord, Lord, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth, doers of the word, he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, many will say to me in that day, the day of entering finally the kingdom of heaven. It says many, not few, not some, many, many people who are popular, maybe like me, in congregations, they are adored by their congregation. They are respected by their congregation. And they even go beyond their, their, their congregation, their denomination. They are respected outside. Because what do outside know, outside people know? What do they know about me? All they know is what they hear on the pulpit. Do they know my private life? Do we know their private lives? How much do we know of those people we see in the public? And I will see them on the net or see them in social media. All we can tell is the wheelchair that goes up, somebody has been healed. All we can tell is the person that says, I was blind, now I can see. And those people become popular. And the more popular they become, the more proud they become. And their pride can even push down the Lord and exalt themselves and they can count their own word superior to the word of the bible that's where downfall comes when a preacher exalts his own idea his own word above the word of god and miracles are still happening look at this many will say to me that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. Verse 23, it says, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Depart from me, Balaam, whose eyes are opened, and who can see all the trance, and who can prophesy of Christ to come. Yet, privately, he taught Balak to introduce the women of Moab to the children of Israel in a corner behind so that they will commit immorality and perish. Balaam prophesied, yet the Lord was not pleased with him. Judas Iscariot, when he went out two by two, he also went out and there was no failure, just like the others cast out devil. Judas cast out devil. Have I not chosen you twelve and one of you is a devil? Where you see now. It's not just miracle. It's not just healing. It's not just deliverance. It's being saved and living that safe life at home, on the street, in the church, privately and publicly. 
It's not just saying I'm sanctified or preaching sanctification. It's practicing, living in that godliness and sanctification everywhere you find yourself. That's the way to heaven and praise God, you'll get there in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three, and the disciples committed to the word of the scripture. Disciples who are committed to the word of God. It tells us in John chapter 8, verse 31. In John chapter 8, verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if he continue in my word, if he continue in the word of repentance, you've missed your step, you've done something you really shouldn't have done if you continue in the word of repentance. You've, uh, you know, maybe mistakenly or maybe deliberately, you've taken something belonging to other people, money, property, whatever, and now you discover. And you know Christ can come at any time if you continue in my word of restitution, you've discovered that your habit of late is, you know, going back. The righteousness of faith, the righteousness of the faithful, is no more reflected in your life. And you see that we need to have this righteousness, except your righteousness shall exceed, except your righteousness, me, you, you, everyone, accept your righteousness. The righteousness you profess, accept that righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Outward righteousness. Ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. And he says, we continue in that word of righteousness. All the commandments he gave, all the word he gave. And he makes grace available that we seek his grace. And we seek his goodness. And we seek his godliness. And we follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man of whatever profession, no man of any religious height, without that holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And he says, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. I pray every one of us will continue in his word in Jesus' name. And where we'll become slack or careless, we'll go back to Christ, go back to the cross, go back to Calvary, and kind of readjust our luggage, rearrange our lives, and have the blood of the Lamb cleanse us, purge us, purify us, and make us ready for the coming of the Lord. I pray none of us will receive the word of God in vain in Jesus name that the word will work effectually in every hearer let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer we've had quite a lot tonight of the word of God and we receive that word at the word of God indeed and in truth open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I know every good gift, salvation, comes from the Father of lights. When you come out of darkness and come out of shady, shady things, and you come to the light, you come to Christ, the light of the world, and you reveal everything in your life to Him and say, Lord, I see this, I see this, I see this. Forgive me, cleanse me, wash me, touch me, and I shall be as white as snow, 
touch me again and I shall be whiter than snow. Tell the Lord, salvation is a gift. When that gift comes in, it transforms our lives and changes us through and through. Tell him, if you discover backsliding, talk to him, merciful God, he'll restore you, he'll wash you, and the sin that made you to backslide, he will take away, and he will take the love for sin, take that away from your heart. The desire for sin will take that away from your life. The liking of the pleasure of sin will take that pleasure of sin away. You will not have pleasure in sin or sinfulness anymore. The gift of salvation. You've been hearing about sanctification and holiness for such a long time now. Have you ever set time apart looking at the condition of your heart, at the naughtiness in the heart, and looking at the incorrigibility in the heart? Have you thought so much about heaven and know that that naughtiness, stiff neck, stubbornness, rigidity, rebellion will not get to heaven? Are you serious about heaven? And do you go to God? And seek his face when we are sanctified. All those appearances of evil will be cleansed off. There will be no attachment of any appearance of evil in your heart anymore. And you will not be playing the religion of outward righteousness. If my friends, my neighbors, my acquaintances, if they don't see it, then I'm good enough. No, God sees it. He knows the heart. He knows your thoughts. He you knows your inward plan. He you knows the inward depravity. He you knows the naughtiness. And he you knows the superfluity, overflowing naughtiness. Can't you see the flood of naughtiness on the ground? Everywhere you are, everywhere you act, everywhere you are allowed to bring out your behavior, don't you see the flood of that? dirty water of rebellion, disobedience, naughtiness on the ground. Why don't you tell the Lord this careless life, careless behavior, superfluity of naughtiness, for God to wash them off. You have had enough. You know enough. In this church, you know what sin is. You know what disobedience is. 
You know what depravity is? You know what naughtiness is? And you know the superfluity that flows out every time. And everybody can see. When are you going to prepare for heaven? Seek the Lord. Salvation. Sanctification. And the gift of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Renounce all those ensnaring works of the sinner's character, sinner's superfluity, sinner's gambling with their soul. And receive the nobling works, wonders of his oppression in your life, and retain the engrafted word. All that you have heard, retain, retain. Renew your life. Let the blood wash you, cleanse you, purge you, purify you, renew you, revive you, and renounce and lay apart all the superfluity of disobedience. Be doers of the word. In all sincerity, doers of the word. Do it. If you have grace, you will do it. If you have a heart for God, you will do it. Do it. Be doers of the word. Not preachers only, not proclaimers only, not counselors only, be doers of the word, not hearers only. Hear us only. Deceive themselves. Preachers only. Deceive themselves. Proud preachers who take liberty to put down the apostles of the New Testament and to set themselves up higher than the apostles of the Lord, they deceive themselves. Pastors, general superintendents, General overseers, state overseers, region overseers, any kind of overseer, exalting his position above the word of God, rating 
their own word above the word of God, they deceive themselves. They arrogate to themselves the authority Christ has not given them. They take their own revelation above the revelation of the word of truth. Self-deluded people. Don't deceive yourself. The word of God is above everyone, above every preacher, above every pioneer, above every pastor, above any contemporary one. A pride is lifting up. Be a true disciple, be a true follower. Give yourself wholly to the world. Commit yourself completely to the world. Commit yourself wholeheartedly without reservation to the word of scripture. If you continue in my word of repentance, restitution, righteousness, my word of revelation, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed? And ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the word you have sent to everyone. We pray that this word will profit everyone who has heard in Jesus' name. Yeah. We pray we will not bite the finger that feeds us. You feed us with the totality of the world. We pray we will honor you. We will respect your word. We receive everything you send by your word in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray everyone will receive more of your grace today in Jesus' name. More godliness, more holiness, give every one of us. And we pray, Lord, that that godliness and the goodness of God shine forth in a bright way in our lives everywhere we go in Jesus' name. Separate us from the people that are so proud. They trample on your word. They trample on uh, the apostles of the Bible. They trample on your revelation, your mystery. Separate us from them in Jesus' name. Your people are candidates for heaven. And nothing will take heaven from any of us in Jesus' name. Wipe out every form of carelessness, every form of super, uh, superficiality, and every form of frivolity away from our lives in Jesus' name. Take the fear of man away from our heart. Give us the clean fear of God. 
And everywhere your people go, your presence will go with them. Your power will go with them. And everyone here, everyone partaking with us at the Bible study will stand without compromise. Will stand fearlessly. I will proclaim your word without fear, without favor in Jesus' name. Your gift of salvation, your gift of sanctification, your gift of the power of the Holy Ghost be for all your people in Jesus' name. Keep on preparing us for heaven. And when the Lord shall come, my brother, my sister, myself, all of us will see you on the final day, will be with you. Confirm it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.